Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at our first Winter Thoughts video this year. I know it's very, very early, but we've been doing this for three years, and this is always when we've done it, is around the middle of May time frame. So I'm very excited to be presenting this to you guys, and I know a lot of people are looking forward to this. Uh, so I'm very excited to talk about this upcoming winter, uh, even though it's very, very far out. But I'm excited to be talking about it, uh, because it's my favorite, favorite thing to talk about. <music> All right, let's hop right into things. And first things first, we're taking a look at those sea surface temperatures. There's a few separate areas we have to especially talk about that we can kind of predict this far out and talk about how they could change, but also how they are right now. Let's just assume if the winter was starting right now, how what would this basically be for the winter? What would this look like by the time we're reaching the winter time? A lot of these are very long-term oscillations that we can basically expect to stay pretty similar. Uh, let's just name a few here. Our PDO, first off, which is in a negative phase right now, we can expect this to look pretty similar. This is the longest living oscillation. This basically uh, lasts years and years and years in one phase and then switches most times. It can switch back and forth, but very, very often it does last many, many years generally. We're in a negative phase right now, which means those very blue colors there offshore of the west coast of America, also Canada, and then south of Alaska. That is indicating that we have very cold waters offshore compared to normal, a couple of degrees below normal there for those sea surface temperatures, which means a negative PDO is in place. Usually this means colder in the west and warmer in the east, so we're going to have to see how this is, how this kind of transforms throughout the year, because if this can stick around like this, this is definitely going to spell a lot of cold air being poured into the western United States, uh, which could mean more cold and snow for the United States in general. That ENSO area is a very interesting one. That one's also a very long-term oscillation. Usually a year or two is how long you can expect each phase to last. We've been in a La Nina. Last winter was a La Nina. Uh, and it's kind of weakened. It's gone more towards a neutral ENSO. I will tell you, a neutral ENSO is the best winter for cold and snow lovers. Uh, that's, from my experience, been the, the coldest and the snowiest winters have come in neutral ENSO. So the closer this is to being basically... Uh, normal temperatures there in the sea surface underneath the Enzo region, uh, that's going to be the best bet for cold and snow in the United States. So that's very cold. Uh, <laughs> I almost said very cold news. It is very cold news, but it's also very good news for you cold and snow lovers. We see our NAO as well, which is in a negative phase. Uh, this one's a little bit quicker. This one can go negative and positive all the time. But generally, when you see warmer water south of Greenland, that tells me there's going to be mostly negative NAO. Uh, for the next little while until that water temperature changes. Uh, so I do expect that over the course of at least the summer, at may possibly even into the fall, possibly into the winter, depending on if these warm water temperatures can stick around or not, I do expect that we will have mostly a negative NAO most of the time. The seven-day change, which tells us basically how things have changed the past seven days, shows us that the ENSO has warmed in some areas, it's cooled down in some areas. That PDO area, again, offshore of the west coast of North America, has mostly just cooled over the past seven days. And then that NAO area is kind of a toss-up as well, just like the ENSO. It's been warm in some areas and colder in some areas over the past seven days. Now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at some charts that are going to show us a little bit more in depth of what we can expect uh, and where these have changed over the past little while. Now, this is our Nino 3.4 index. This is how we measure the El Nino or La Nina. And this just shows you exactly what I've been talking about. You can see February and March down there, we were in a La Nina, a weak one at that, but we were in a La Nina. Uh, and it has generally warmed over the past little bit to where now we're basically right at neutral. Uh, this leaves us with kind of a huge question mark because is this going to go above that line and head into the El Nino territory? Or is it going to go back down and head back towards a La Nina? Or is it going to stick right around that 0.0, .0 line? which would basically, again, mean the best possible uh, scenario for cold and snow lovers. It doesn't guarantee you a good snowy winter, uh, but it, got, it does give you the best odds, in my opinion, if we could stick with that neutral ENSO. Uh, here we are taking a look at the North Atlantic overall, and this also does influence things. Uh, and this has been very, very warm. We've seen a very warm Atlantic so far. Uh, things are, are looking well above normal there for the Atlantic, which obviously has massive implications for the hurricane season. Uh, but not only that, the temperatures on the eastern regions of the United States uh, can be influenced by these sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic as well. So we have to watch for that. 
Now here we are taking a look at a chart, and this is our ENSO chart again, but this one, instead of looking back and showing us where have things have headed, this shows us where things are expected to head according to all of these different models. Now, as you can see, most of these keep us right around neutral, as you can see, throughout the entire year until we reach the D DJF down there on the very bottom right. That is December, January, February time frame, which is our meteorological winter, December to February. Uh, so if we are right around that neutral line, like I said, that could spell a pretty cold and pretty snowy winter uh, for the United States. Very, very interesting. Um, now, I tried to find some sea surface temperature forecasts, as you can see, but the CFS model, I've, I've had some problems with this model in the past, and I've mentioned this for the past few years, uh, but this is just reaching an all-time low for the CFS model. Um, look, at, look at what this model is calling for for February of 2022. We better hope this doesn't happen because this would be really bad. Uh, I don't expect anything like this. This is basically just calling for above normal sea surface temperatures everywhere, except for a few select regions, obviously. Uh, but outside of that, above normal temperatures everywhere, including the ENSO region, including both PDO regions, which usually one is negative, one is positive. This would be like a super positive PDO that's never been it's never been heard of before. Uh, this is not valid at all. And as you can see, the air temperature forecast according to this model, also for D DJF, December, January, February, is also just above average ab across the board. So this is just not even usable at this point. We can't get any information out of this that means anything. Uh, so we're just going to have to go based off of knowledge, which is the best way to go at this range. We're obviously talking about something that is so many months away. I can only talk about a few things that I know uh, aren't going to drastically change between now and the winter time, which is mostly just our PDO and our ENSO. That's the two things that I can basically hedge on not changing significantly between now and the winter time. And if it did, I could always update you guys uh, and it would be <laughs> okay. This is just a winter thoughts video, not a winter forecast video. That's a big difference there. What we're going to do in a moment is we are going to move on. And we're going to try to get any information out of this model that we can. We'll look at the precipitation forecast and also the jet stream forecast and see if we can get any sort of logical information from this model. All right, now here we are taking a look at that precipitation forecast according to this model. And this actually is some information that I find useful. We have dry along the two coasts, which is typical of a La Nina. This actually does look like a little bit more of a La Nina um, pattern, kind of dry in the southeast there, and then also dry in the southwest with some near normal conditions there for the northwest. Usually in a La Nina, you would see above normal precipitation. Uh, but regardless, this does kind of look like a La Nina pattern, especially that Ohio Valley and inland area, seeing some of that above average precipitation. This tells me this model does see some troughing happening in the eastern United States for sure. And as you can see here, as we take a look at that uh, 500 millibar geopotential height, or to make it simple, basically just the jet stream forecast, because this can show you what it might look like. Follow those black lines. You can see them ridging a little bit along the west coast and troughing a little bit along the east coast. And this is for, again, December through February of 2021 to 2022. Uh, and I definitely think that this model thinks, you know, we're going to have a trough in the east most of the time and a ridge in the west most of the time. But that hardly means anything because it's a three-month period. Uh, so there will be many warm periods for the eastern United States and many cold periods, regardless of what kind of winter we see, there will be cold times and there will be warm times. Uh, so that will not change uh, regardless. As far as what the CPC is calling for, the Climate Prediction Center, you can see this is for, again, uh, December, January, February. They're calling for warmer than normal conditions there for the eastern United States and the southwestern United States with possibly some neutral or colder than normal conditions there for the northwest and through the central United States. They're expecting an omega block pattern, perhaps, which is also what they're expecting this summer and spring, mostly. So I think they're maybe just carrying that information over month by month and just kind of sticking to their guns with what they're expecting now to kind of last until then, which is kind of like the easy route. It's never going to be really accurate, but it's the most like safe option, if that makes sense. Uh, the precipitation forecast, there's hardly any information to get out of this, except they do expect possibly some above average precipitation there for the north central United States. Anyway, for our confidence tab, we're at a two out of six. This isn't very surprising. Uh, this is very far out, so we're at about a 20% confidence. There's a very good probability that Pretty much most of what I said in this video could be wrong, uh, but I do think that I am onto some things. The ENSO and the PDO are very, very easy to predict on a very long range uh, type, you know, outlook. So I do feel quite confident that we will be either in a neutral ENSO or a very, very weak La Nina 
Uh, I would say probably an 80% chance that we stay there. Uh, and then the other 20% would be in the El Nino side of things, which I think is a very, very long shot. I do not think that will be occurring. And that gives us a great idea, a, a, a general blueprint of what we could expect this winter. The PDO, uh, there's a chance that it will flip, but again, probably like a 75 or 80% chance that it just stays in that kind of positive PDO phase, which again gives us a really great idea and a great blueprint of what to expect. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, John Bambenek, James Wade, Dobie Nagel, Lerda the Pan, and Donna Carnes, alongside our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Colley, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Son Cindy Klein, Mark J, Lou Falego, Garys, and John Khaleesi, and Dwight Phelan. If you would like to be a part of this patron entry of the day, you could do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members, our Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, and Catbite as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. Be sure to destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help that YouTube algorithm out. And be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.